Hey guys, and welcome back to Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This is going to be a compilation episode of us running around and just grabbing as many of the random collectibles as we possibly can because we finally have the power of bat and we get a couple of useful items, I guess. A lot of it's just chaff though, but um, there's some quite slyly hidden stuff around the castle. To be honest with you, it's actually quite fun just exploring all the little nooks and crannies that this castle actually has. Even if sometimes the items are less than exciting. Now we do find some familiar faces in these lost corridors uh, and some of them still present a little bit of a challenge. We are only level 22, I believe, but very happy to pick up the holy water because I don't know, man, like I say, I'm not an expert at this game, but holy water just seems to be unbelievably overpowered. I'm not 100% sure what stat holy water actually um, draws from. I think some of the special weapons, or secondary weapons I should say, uh, are governed by different stats. But we've still got a fairy. And here we grab the Holy Mail. Now the Holy Mail is a upgrade and uh, it's actually significantly better than the armor we had. Our defense goes up from 9 to 14. Uh, and apparently it does extra um, protection against holy attacks as well, which makes sense. Anyway, back at the very beginning of the game, where we launched ourselves into the castle, there's some goodies up here. But first, <laughs> whilst I still struggle with the controls, we are going to grab the candles. Or candelabras, I guess they are. Now, I don't know if these always spawn at the same th uh, as the same thing, like that $400 bag. That's actually quite useful. You could probably reliably grind that. I don't think there's anything too useful here. Sometimes they're not the easiest of things to get at. Uh, I think the crucifix is actually a really powerful weapon, but to date, I haven't really used it that much. Anyway, some really useful items here. Some more health, permanent boost, and the power of wolf. And I did uh, take me a little while to work out what this power of wolf is, and it just allows you to run quicker, essentially. Now, kind of in the beginning section of the castle here, we find ourselves a shield potion, even though it's obviously a shield pill. Just further down from that, we find another max life upgrade which, man, I'm enjoying uh, picking all of these up. Now, we picked up the hammer from where the dull enemies are. I thought the hammer was a weapon that we could equip. It isn't. It's actually for our fairy familiar, and that's what she uses to crack us out of being petrified, which I thought was quite interesting. We actually have to have um, that item for her to use. We also unlocked the bat familiar, which at this particular point, I'm not sure what the bat does. I know the fairy basically heals you and will alert you to false walls and things like that. And actually, I think we're going to see an example of that. We've got a cloth cape, which is, I believe, the most basic cape in the game. It's fine. It's better than nothing, but we're going to get a lot better stuff than that. Now this area I thought was quite cool. The load of jars. Alchemy jars, I'm guessing. Full of just about every secondary weapon you could want. And I'm just breaking them all just for the sake of breaking them all, I suppose. Wasting time. And there is the skill of the wolf. I can't remember what the skill of the wolf does. I think we're going to have a look at it here. Skill of the Wolf. Ah, that allows you to do your special move, I see. 
So the special move, I'm There's not 100 percent sure. About this wall. Haven't used it yet. But if we attack down, we find a nice little bonus down here. A max life. Now the interesting thing about that max life is I'm pretty sure when we head straight back up, I think there's another one almost straight away. Or at least there's another permanent buff through another fragile wall just here. And that is, ah, that's a max heart, which is cool. Certainly going to be holding on to that. Now, we can start exploring this uh, staircase leading to the upper floors. Because this staircase actually has a heck of a lot of items hidden. Some quite good, some kind of not really worth our time. But the Mystic Pendant, that's actually quite good. I believe that will uh, allow us to bring our armor back. Magic Missile, that's a magical attack. I think it's a single-use item. It's, I think it's quite powerful, but it's a single-use, so... Same with the Shuriken. I believe that's also single-use. Red Weapon. Ah, and the Ank of Life. The Ank of Life, I believe, allows healing items to actually recover more health. TNT, that is a single-use item which is kind of similar to a grenade. Yeah, so Ank of Life improves how much health we recover from healing items and the Mystic, yep, Mystic Pendant just regenerates our magic faster. So again, nothing like super, super groundbreaking, but handy nonetheless. Boomerang, uh, the Boomerang is a thrown weapon. Uh, and I don't believe it's single use. I don't think you can lose it, but I haven't used it for a long time. And we have a Morning Star. Now, the Morning Star, I don't believe is better than the weapon that we're using at the moment. The Holy Rod. The Holy Rod actually uh, carried me for a lot of this game. No. Anti-aerial weapon, interesting. Maybe we'll have a little play with those a bit later on in the LP. Anyway, we have more items to find. Namely, just slightly to the right. We can find some goggles. I have no idea what the goggles do. They are an equipable item. Uh, and the game doesn't really say much. Comfortable eye protection. I mean, it gives us like plus one defense and brings our initiative down. Is it better than what we have? I, I don't know. I think we wear it for the... Yeah, I think we're going to try it. I do wonder if it highlights any... Objects or anything. I believe you do get an item that does. Now, this is the Room of Death that gave me massive, massive amounts of trouble when I played this game originally, until I had the idea of um, just flying over them in bat form and cheesing the shit out of it, which seemed to work way better than I thought because the gun guys, for some reason, just don't turn around. I don't know why. I didn't program the game, but I thought that was kind of interesting. So, we have the Shield Rod. Now, the Shield Rod massively buffs our protection for some reason. But it does feel a little bit slower. Now, I'm getting my ass absolutely handed to me by being an idiot. Also, we've still got the Leather Shield equipped, but I do actually have the Night Shield. So, I'm pretty sure I actually rectify that here. Now... We find the Gravekeeper. This guy's a bit of a champion, but, you know, liberal use of uh, holy water gets rid of him and gives us access to the green tea. I believe the green tea is just a healing item. Anyway, continuing on through the Colosseum, we find another room full of skelly bags. 
and we grab another Max Heart upgrade, which is pretty nice. For some reason, I decide to keep the daggers here. Don't know why. Now, also in the same area-ish, but to the right, no, to the left, sorry, we find the Blood Cloak. The Blood Cloak is way better um, than the Cloth Cloak. It also makes us look pretty cool in black and red. Um, and all damage received gets turned into hearts, which is really useful. Mana Prism, I'm not 100% sure what that does. Resist Fire Potion is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It, well, resists fire attacks, I guess. And Luck Potion, I guess that just massively improves your luck stat. I suppose that's handy if you're grinding for certain things. Now, another hidden wall, which will surrender its secrets to us. We have a piece of cheese, we have an onyx, and a broadsword for some reason. I don't know why. I think we've already got a broadsword. It's not actually a great weapon. Anyway, going back to the prison area, we can find an Estoc, which is a double-handed sword which I've actually equipped here. Um, I don't like it at all. I do like this area. I like the way you see enemies, or, well, say enemies. You see people um, locked up in the prisons. Kind of crazy when you think about it. But yeah, this double-handed sword is very powerful, but it always pushes you forwards. We've got the iron ball. We've already got one of those. Now, I was completely unprepared for this. We are making our way, not too slowly, towards another boss. And I was not prepared. I was like, oh. <laughs> Whoops. Yes. We have all rocks. Now, all rocks kind of kicked my ass quite significantly here. I believe I actually switched my weapon up eventually, because although this thing does crazy damage, it's slow and it's unwieldy. It's possible uh, there's a way better technique with this weapon, but I do not possess such skills. So this guy's not too bad. He's got these floating skulls that are going to keep coming at us, but we can easily kill those. He also fires a Star Trek like phaser at us, which does massive amounts of damage, but luckily we can just hide under that. You know, if you actually pay attention to the fight at hand. Thanks to our fairy for healing us there. Now this is his second form, and his second form is kind of a joke turns into this giant green gribbly thing but I really do just phone this in here pretty bad I was completely using the wrong weapons I should have been using something fast and nimble I'm guessing the holy rod might have been a good shout against this guy but instead Titan's gonna Titan yeah, I finally, <laughs> I finally decided to swap that out. I'm just like, yeah, this, this weapon sucks. At least I suck with it. So we go back to the Holy Rod, which doesn't do a huge amount of damage against him, but it's way faster. And it doesn't lock you into that uh, animation that pushes you forwards either, which gets me loads of damage and I appear to have forgotten the fact that I have a shield here which is so frustrating to watch this back I'm guessing the shield would probably block oh look there we go our familiar has actually given us protection from fire here which is pretty good of her to be honest I'm glad she's a little bit more competent than I am although it doesn't appear that that lasts very long but he's nearly dead anyway. Now, I'm not a fan of his hitbox here. You can see he's got like an outstretched leg here, but you can't really hit it very efficiently. 
but he's dead. So even though I played that pretty much as bad as you possibly can, CAD, that's like could and can, the same, <laughs> the same word. Um, yeah, that could have been done so much more efficiently, but doesn't matter, huh? Doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning is winning. And our fairy kind of uh, saved us there quite a lot. And I think that Ank of Life also played into that as well. Anyway. Following on, we get Tamed Echo of Bat. Now, this is an interesting ability that allows us to use like Echo Location. Which, from what I can remember, actually is only useful in one part of the game. Um, I mean, possibly a couple of parts, but from what I can remember, it's of very, very limited use. Except the bit where you need it, and it's kind of essential. But we'll cover that when we get there. I believe there's still one more power-up to get as the bat. And that gives us a attack, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, which I may or may not be. But we have a decent amount of health now, 203 life. That's quite a lot. I don't want to say that we're overpowered, because we're absolutely not. In fact, I think we're still only level 22 or 23. Bearing in mind, maximum is 100. But anyway, guys, that's that. Thank you for watching. And as always, till next time.